Hey everybody, Justin Ryan here, and I'm here with Marshall Stevens Pino, and we are back once again for Webisode Wednesdays. We took a little bit of a break, and we had so many people email right in who wanted us to keep on going with the webisode. So we here we are in Florida, we're outside since it's the weather's so nice, and we thought we'd um, let you enjoy some of that weather too with us. So today we've got. Um, but what's the question and topic today? Well, the question that somebody wrote me is, I hear so much about your coming out story. It's, I don't think people know the reality of it, that it's just five years since Harvey Milk's murder. Uh, it's right at the time of Prop 6. Um, Anita Bryant was still doing her thing. But what I don't really understand is your divorce. You always just say, I got divorced. And, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about that, and that was actually a question that she wrote in when we said, you know, writing questions about Webisode Wednesdays, and I thought, you know, it, it's always hard to talk about a relationship because oh, yeah. there's at least two sides to every yeah. relationship. <laughs> but I think the main thing that I tell people that are going through that is that my divorce was way harder for me than coming out. And it wasn't because of the church. You know, outside things, the shoulda, woulda, coulda things that come from outside, um, those are the things about being gay. And, and of course, uh, back then the mainstream evangelical church was way down on divorce. You couldn't, you couldn't even be an usher in our church if you'd been divorced. And, uh, and now they have divorce and separation classes at that very oh, yeah. same church. And, and so, they've, so they've moved the way the church has always moved to broader understandings. I mean, they've moved in their understanding of divorce from when Jesus said, you know, Moses only suffered you to uh, have divorce because of the hardness of your hearts, but I'm telling you, if you even lust after somebody, it's the same as divorce and stuff. And the church, the evangelical church has moved into saying, well, divorce meant something different back then, which it did. It meant that a woman either had to go back to her parents' home in disgrace because she hadn't pleased her husband, or she had to become a slave, or she had to become a prostitute. There weren't any other ways that women were allowed to work. Um, and there were very few women that actually made their way in the world with work. So basically to divorce a woman meant to, you know, leave her helpless and impoverished. And so the church, the evangelical church, has started to look at that and say, you know, maybe there's other reasons and stuff like that. And. I think the reason that it was so hard for me is because I wasn't under any illusion when I said my marriage vows. Right. I swore to God mm -hmm. that I would stay with this man. And that meant way more to me than what other people thought or the gay straight blah blah blah. You know, um, that really broke my heart. And people think that I got divorced because I was gay, which really wasn't true. It wasn't until I was, we were already separated and into divorce that I thought, you know, if I'm ever with anybody again, I want it to be a woman. But it wasn't until, you know, we'd already gotten to that place with many counselors and, you know, we got married when we were 19. <laughs> it's not an excuse, but I'm just saying. Um, and uh, as you know, I need a lot of attention in life. <laughs> Cindy's not here to go, yeah. I think I heard her over, over there somewhere, <laughs> singing from the back. I know, I, I said that to Nancy, Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson one time, and she said, well, but you have many other redeeming qualities. <laughs> yeah, people say the same thing about me, so I think that's why we get along so well. <laughs> but, 
you know, so my husband felt that he couldn't give me the attention that I needed, and he and he wanted me to look for it somewhere else. And you know, so we began to grow apart. And he met somebody at work, and he's still married to that person 30 years later. And, um, but nothing about that felt right to me. You know, I didn't feel that I had any right to leave him because I promised I would. And so today, I've had a couple times, well, it's actually many times, when people who have either come to the Lord at my concerts or come back to the Lord at my concerts have faced, I'm married and I'm gay, now what do I do? I am. And I've had people deal with it in different ways, I, um, all of which I think have been far more honorable than mine was. Um, I know one just recently who uh, talked to his wife, talked to his kids, he said, these are my feelings, I'm not going to be acting on them right now, but I don't know how to go on in my life pretending that I'm somebody that I'm not. And, you know, they ended up, he did end up getting a divorce because he said, he and his wife both said, you will always be part of my family, but you cannot be my spouse because we just don't have that relationship. And so it was an honorable, understood, out in the open thing. And then he was able to move on and, and have a wonderful relationship with somebody without all that, you know, well, I promised before and it didn't work out, so now what does it mean if I promise me? And I also had a friend who said, um, I'm probably gay, but the one thing in my life I haven't messed up yet is my marriage. And so he went to his wife and said, you know, I think I'm probably gay, but I think that's why we... You know, have been kind of best friends instead of anything else for a long time. But if it's okay with you, I would go on being your best friend. And I would just, you know, say that, uh, you know, my passion and stuff, just like anybody who doesn't have a partner, their passions go into something else, you know. And he said, I, I have artistic work that I do that my passions would go into. And, and she was fine with that, and that's what they worked out. And that's, and that's honorable for them. It doesn't mean that he's denying that he's gay or that he's pretending to be straight. But So I think there's a lot of honorable ways to deal with it, and I don't think I dealt with it honorably. Um, and, you know, that I had somebody tell me one time, you know what, you reap what you sow, and the only thing you can do about that is sow well today. All right. I think that's a good word for today. And I think that we should go enjoy some of this weather now that we've, you know, done our weekly <laughs> yeah. duty so maybe we'll jump in the pool I don't know we'll think about it I don't know <laughs> it'll mess up your hair you're right it will mess up my hair all the hair products ah I didn't think what am I thinking now? I'm slipping but anyway um, we hope you'll tune in next week um, of course you can see us on YouTube you can see us on Facebook you can catch us on Twitter because you're um, getting better at Twitter I'm getting better at it getting better at Twitter or you can catch us at bombministries.net or justinryanonline.com and we'll see you next week. God bless and hope you have a great week.